Elon announced Tesla Master Plan Part 3 is in the works. I'm Brian. Welcome to My Tesla Weekend. You may be watching the full version on Friday on My Tesla Live, the second channel, or you may be watching the condensed version over the weekend on My Tesla Weekend. It's whichever one you see on the screen. So back in 2006, Elon made his secret master plan, just between you and me. It, uh, you know, <laughs> was ambitious, was bold. And anyone on Reddit uh, and Twitter and YouTube is happy to tell you that he has absolutely uh, satisfied it. Because if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you see it's build a sports car, a check, use that money to build an affordable car, a check, use that money to build an even more affordable car, and provide zero emission electric power generation options. Did he actually do it though? If a if a YouTuber tells you that all of these are checks, they're 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 skipping the details. They're just trying to make you happy so you'll give them a like. So he said the, the roadster was absolutely built, but it wasn't built for 89,000. And the four door at roughly half that price, well, that'd be 44500 That never happened. And then one even more affordable than that, I assume we're talking about the Model 3. Well, the Model 3 you cannot get for 44000 So I would call these partly complete. <laughs> I'd call them partly complete. Batteries make them better. Yeah, lithium iron phosphate. I would count that as a check. And the batteries, they'd already moved to a lower nickel, lower cobalt sort of sort of thing. But but can you count that? And then of course, becoming energy positive creates sustainable energy products from other companies along with the car like Solar City. I would call that a check. So that's all good. Ish. Uh, not one to uh, call that a day. That's not his thing. Master plan part two, 10 years later. Create stunning solar roofs with seamlessly integrated battery storage. Expand the electric drive. Well, let's just start there. Would you, would you call them stunning? I think they look nice. I mean, stunning. I don't know. I like them. But stunning is a big word. And uh, they're very expensive and they're very hard to get. Expand the electric vehicle product line to address all major segments. No. No, we're not there. The pickup will, will the Cybertruck will absolutely get us a lot, lot, lot closer. But we're not there. We're just not there. We still need cargo vehicles. We need minivans. We need vehicles under 40,000. That will address all major segments, in my opinion. Develop a self-driving capability that is 10 times safer than manual. Well, I mean, we know we're not there. Enable your car to make money for you when you aren't using it. I mean... You can put it on Turo. I don't think that's what he meant. So why are we moving on to part three with so much of part two not done? Can we count the solar roof? It's, it's just not easy to deploy. It's very expensive. The integrated battery storage, that's a check for sure. But the reason to move on from part two, part d is because these are all on cruise control. These will happen no matter what. So what is part three? Oh, look at this page. It says like and subscribe. Oh, I don't know how that got there. So what is part three? Well, in my opinion, part three uh, is autonomy. Of course it is. It's artificial intelligence. Of course it is. But the first part, 
is to get rid of peaker plants. Let's get rid of them. There's a thousand in the U.S. alone. None of them have really been replaced yet. That's ripe for disruption. That's a trillion dollar opportunity there. And I know because I made a whole video about it. Getting rid of peaker plants is a big deal. And it's something Tesla can do. They already have the roadmap. They already know what they're doing. It's going to be easy. Ish. They've built the factory to make the mega packs. We saw a flyover from Sawyer Merritt today where there's 293 mega packs outside of Giga Nevada awaiting delivery. That's a lot of capacity. Stationary storage doesn't have to use the highest density batteries. They can use kind of whatever. You know, because weight is less critical. That's a fun... That's a fun, uh, fun choice I, I went with there. So step one of part three, make peaker plants obsolete. Part two, build the bot. A cheap, simple bot. Now in my video, I'd said they could probably build it for $20,000. And the more I think about that, the more I realize, no, it's... It's going to be like a thousand to two thousand to build it. This is very complicated. It doesn't need to be this complicated. It can be simplified, and it will be. If you look at the first hoverboard, it was a very complicated device. And then all the Chinese knockoffs came along. And the first thing they thought was, oh, <clears throat> obviously they infringed on our patents. Cracked it open. No, they took completely different approaches to get to the same place. So... The bot can be very, very cheap, and it can be very, very good. So build a cheap, simple bot. Well, it can't be cheap. I mean, the chip set alone is going to be a thousand or two. Yeah, but Moore's Law hasn't expired yet. It's slowing down, but it hasn't expired. But in order to get the bot, we need part three, the big part, AI. So we're talking dojo. This was a, an amazing event. If you haven't watched the full video of the, of the AI Day presentation, um, maybe don't. It's very, very hard to understand. It's real wonky. It wasn't for us. It wasn't for shareholders. It wasn't for buyers. It was a recruiting event and a very successful one. So they had to deal with <laughs> people like us scratching our heads and trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Now, this has a lot, a lot of breakthroughs, a lot of revolutionary stuff. But so did Hardware 1 for self-driving. And so did Hardware 2 and 3. These chip designers do not clock out and head to the beach and move on to some other company or project. The project they move on to is the next Tesla project. What we've seen in Dojo, by the time it's actually out and working, will already be almost obsolete by Tesla standards. They'll be on to the next one, and it'll be another step change. It's very exciting. So it's a beast, but the next beast is coming. So the first thing they got to do is solve every application of driving. Every application, which will put truck drivers out of work. 3.6 million professional truck drivers. And that doesn't count all the other drivers. There's a shortage of drivers of all kinds. Um, taxi, Uber, Lyft, school bus. It's coming. And it's going to put a lot of people out of work. <clears throat> And then after that, the big thing is to solve every job case that requires physical labor on Earth. Now, when it comes to creative stuff, intelligent stuff, bots are already doing that. They just don't have bodies. When it comes to construction, that is a relatively safe profession for now. 
But once the bots got the dexterity and the intelligence to drill holes and run wires in a framed up new residential building, it's going to shift. And in the beginning, they'll be slower than humans, but so much cheaper, it doesn't matter. Throw 10 in where you might throw two humans, but they'll get faster and they'll get faster quickly and they'll get cheaper quickly. So solve every case related to driving, solve every case related to labor on earth and solve every case regarding labor off earth. If you can make them work in the desert without supervision, if you can drop them in Antarctica and they can do their job, they're ready for the big time. They can go to Mars and build the everything before we get there. They could be the biggest workforce on the moon in 10 to 12 years. Well, I mean, they would be the only workforce, but you get what I'm saying. So the FSD will kill the profession of driving and the bot will kill the rest of the professions. Part four. Here we go. Master plan part three, step four, protect humanity from both bots and poverty. What would that look like? <clears throat> what does it look like to protect? Well, Elon has been on the forefront of saying we need to have standards for AI. He's thinking Asimov's laws of robotics, but on a higher level, <clears throat> something like you know, just legislating it, not just coding it, but putting safeguards in place. But to protect against danger is one thing. We also need to protect against poverty. How do we do that? I don't know the answer for sure. I have a bunch of ideas I've shared in the past, specifically on my Tesla bot video, where I was saying that what we need is bot taxes. Yeah, taxes on bots. They're doing work. It has value. They should be paying for it. Um, someone should be paying for it. So I've got a video I've uh, written that I wrote last night that I haven't yet um, finished. Mm -hmm. haven't, haven't shot or anything yet. That explains some of the ways the Tesla bot can safely, humanely, make the world a better place. You can start by giving them jobs no one wants or can't afford or for which there is no budget. Send them out to replant forests. That's a valuable, that's a valuable thing. And they can just be sunlight powered, easy. Leave them out there. Drop in more saplings for them to plant. They can clean rivers. They can go to the floor of the ocean and pick up trash. It's a silly idea, just sending a bunch of bots out to the ocean floor to pick up trash bags. But do it. They could be, they could explore the ocean in ways humans simply can't. So, how do you fund that? Well, uh, I don't want to spoil it, because I've got some good jokes on it, which will be in the next video on this topic. But the bottom line is rich countries will pay small taxes on bots and rich people will pay small taxes on bots to provide lifestyles uh, for humans. It'll free us up to do what we want to do. So while Master Plan Part 1 back in 2006 was ambitious, it was ambitious only on the scale of someone who, whose biggest accomplishment was running PayPal. Master Plan Part 2 was very ambitious, but only ambitious on the scale of someone who had successfully started an, a, a car company, let alone an electric one, which is lunacy at the time. But it was ambitious based on his scale. Master Plan Part 3 is ambitious. Now, is this is my prediction. This is my best guess. Master Plan Part 3 is the sort of thing that is ambitious, even on the scale of richest man alive. Which, today he might be. I'll have to see what Amazon's at, but 
you get the idea. It is ambitious. But you got to do it. So some things I've heard tossed out that uh, people believe is going to happen uh, that I don't think are going to be in the plan. One is a shift away from sales. Now, I believe that's a thing that is going to happen. That's what the focus of that next video is. A shift away from sales, I think, is going to happen. We're already seeing it. Uh, the battery, uh, the large grid-scale battery in Texas, codenamed Gambit Energy, is one example. Um, offering all those Model 3s on leases that you couldn't buy out, that's part of it. But I don't think that's part of the master plan. Tesla aviation, yeah, that could that that's a thing they could do. There are analysts who are very smart who believe that that is absolutely coming. That could happen, but I don't think it's part of the master plan. And uh, a massive uh, shift into being a vendor for other manufacturers sell them battery, license them self-driving? Sure, that can happen. I don't think it's part of the master plan. So we've got another 12 minutes here. If you've got questions, smack them in now. And uh, a quick thanks, as always, to my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, and ad-free experience. All that good stuff. Um, some exclusive content, and a lot of, a lot of early content lately especially on the Cybertruck versus Ford Lightning and uh, things like that. Well, there it is, and there you go. If you want to see the full, uncut, 30-ish minute version of this episode, head over to the second channel, link in the description, and subscribe over there if you want to catch these live each Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific, as well as the Fast Charging with b, &B podcast, co-hosted with Bear from Bear's Workshop. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Tell me in the comments, and stay tuned, and stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the other side.